Good afternoon, I'm Kataniva, and thank you so much for watching Holo Holo, America's top entertainment and lifestyle show for Asian Pacific Americans. We continue with our extended coverage of the Los Angeles Asian Pacific Film Festival. Today we spotlight several filmmakers whose movies have screened at this year's Film Fest. From the coming of age film Farrah Goes Bang to the touching dramedy A Picture of You, plus a documentary on Chinese students searching for fame. We have it all here on the show today. First, meet filmmaker J.P. Chan, whose film A Picture of You tells the heart-wrenching story of a brother and sister who return home after their mother passes to pack up her belongings. I was at your mother's funeral. I'm sorry for your loss. How long are you here? Just until Sunday. A Picture of You is my first feature film, and it's a story about estranged brother-sister who uh, travel from New York City to rural Pennsylvania to clean out the uh, clean out and pack up the, ho the home of their recently deceased mother. Um, and while they're there, they make a uh, unexpected discovery uh, about their mother that turns their world upside down. Hey, have you looked in any of these? Holy sh! Holy sh! Uh, I'm uh, the writer and director of Picture of You, uh, and I worked uh, very closely on the story uh, with my lead actress, Jo May. Uh, jo May and I, uh, she's an actress, uh, she's a Juilliard trained actress uh, from New York City. Uh, we worked together on several short films prior to this, uh, both as, uh, uh, as acting and writing, sort of writing partners. Uh, and so this was kind of the culmination of all doing all these smaller films together to actually do a full length feature project. Yeah, that part was easy to cast uh, since we were writing it for her. Um, and uh, several of the other actors I had known uh, or had worked with previously or had wanted to work with previously. So uh, it was a, yeah, it was fairly simple casting. Uh, I am a, a self-taught filmmaker. I started uh, shooting short films about nine years ago now, actually. I uh, just trying to, didn't go to school for filmmaking, but always wanted to do it. So I uh, just try to teach myself filmmaking by shooting short films every year and then sending them, bringing them to festivals like this one here. Um, and so uh, I had written a couple other feature films as well, uh, feature film scripts, but none of them got made. They were kind of larger scale films. So I decided to sh uh, try to write one that I knew would be kind of smaller and more self-contained and that I could do uh, in 2012, which is the year I wanted to shoot it in. Um, and so, um, yeah, kind of the, sort of standard procedure of doing a, a, a small, a, a micro-budget indie fe feature. Um, you know, just begging people for money to make it, you know, begging talented people to work for me for less than their market rate, and then um, a grueling 18-day shoot uh, in, uh, in eastern Pennsylvania. We shot in the summer of 2012. Uh, it was 18 days in eastern Pennsylvania uh, and one day in New York City. Uh, it was a very hot summer. Uh, most days were over 90 degrees, very humid. Uh, mosquitoes everywhere, um, but we uh, captured the really lush beauty of that part of the country. There's a lot of sort of nature and life and greenery. Well, that actually it was a nice happenstance. A, a, friend, a good friend of mine actually uh, had bought this beautiful home, a second home out in rural Pennsylvania, and had said to me, he knew he was a filmmaker, and said, if you ever want to shoot a film, you know, at my house, you can do it. And at that point, I was only shooting shorts, so I think he figured I would come and you know shoot three days there or something. But uh, in early 2012. I went to my friend Ken and I said, Ken, you know, this is what I want to shoot at your house. And it's a 95 page script and, you know, it's going to take three weeks. And I think his jaw kind of like dropped a little bit. He was like, this is not what I thought I was getting into. But he was in incredibly gracious and generous. And um, because we knew we were going to shoot in that house, I was able to tell the story to take advantage of all of the, every, all of the attributes of the house and the property there. So we had free run of the place. Where does my passion for filmmaking come from? You know, I think I got hooked on movies as, an, as, a, as a child, like many filmmakers. Um, I think I have, I, as a kid, I grew up on like 70s, uh, like sci-fi especially. Like I grew up on just like this random collection of like Star Wars and Star Trek, you know, kind of the basics, but also like the early 70s sci-fi movies of Charlton Heston, you know, so like Soul Ink Green and Planet of the Apes, you know, these post-apocalyptic kind of stories, which is maybe you shouldn't be showing to eight-year-olds and stuff like that. Um, but um, so since I was a little kid I wanted to shoot like a sci-fi film but um, uh, I grew up in a working-class immigrant household single single mom you know raising us and there wasn't much time for art you know she didn't discourage it but she was 
busy trying to keep us afloat. So it wasn't until I was an adult, I'd gone to grad school, I'd kind of established a career that I kind of, you know, went back to these original ideas and said, well, you know, this is this whole part of me that I haven't explored that I've always wanted to do. So um, I, I really should explore filmmaking, you know, because I've always wanted to do it. Um, so it's now or never. So I started uh, working with uh, some theater groups and actors in New York City that I'd met, uh, and from there started shooting short films. And so each year just tried to do a short film and tried to teach myself filmmaking that way by doing it. Uh, well, I, st I went to graduate school for urban planning. I have a master's degree in urban planning, uh, and I wanted to do transportation planning. So I had this like, weird hybrid. I was interested in like cities and transportation, but I was also interested in film. So I pursued the cities and transportation part of me first. After grad school, I, I wound up working for the MTA, which is the uh, transit agency in New York City. We operate the city's buses and subways and trains and bridges and tunnels. So I worked there as a transportation planner, um, doing transportation policy, environmental policy, um, and uh, but then after a couple years there on the side, I started doing these like weird little film projects, film and theater projects. Um, so that that's the job that you know kind of got me going, and I'm still doing that job actually. It's very exciting. I think this is our sixth festival that we've done. Um, it's it's fun because. Uh, but the things I like most about filmmaking are the collaborative processes. Like I said, like I think you know, working or working with uh, you know my collaborators, whether it's writers, actors, you know. Um, but it's often very you're in a bubble. Also, you don't really know how the film is going to be accepted, you know, or what the response will be. So actually showing it, you know, to a room full of strangers and it, you know, is is fantastic. People have been very receptive to our film, and it's been very heartening. You know, people. That's your mom. What are we gonna do? We're gonna pack up the house. Pretend like we never saw it. Um, yeah. I don't wanna know. I don't wanna know. I do not want to know. We're gonna do this. Come on. Is Jen okay? I mean, besides her mom dying and having a terrible relationship with her brother? Yeah. Yeah, besides that. A picture of you also stars Sullivan and Son actress and comedian Jody Long. For more information on the film, you can head to their Facebook page at APOY Film. When we return, filmmaker Mira Menon dishes on her moving film, Farah Goes Bang. <laughs>